Hello and welcome to the Pathfinder Kingmaker Alpha. If you do not know what this game is or is going to be as it is not finished currently, as that being the alpha part of it, um, it is a CRPG in the same kind of vein as Baldur's Gate and Pillars of Eternity. Now if you don't know what Pathfinder is, Pathfinder is a tabletop RPG which is very much focused on the details. It's very mechanically focused, very combat focused, at least in my opinion from playing a couple of different uh, types of RPGs. Now, um, it is also based off D&D 3.5, which is very interesting because this game very much feels like Baldur's Gate, a lot more than Pillars of Eternity did, at least in the short bit that I played so far. It feels very much in that kind of style and it feels like they're really going for that. And that's something that I quite like about it. And we're just going to play it for, I don't know, a couple of episodes. It's not got a ton of content, apparently it's got about 10 hours of Something like that. I imagine that they're aiming for a lot more just because it's the style of the game. But we're going to go into character creation and see what's going on. Now, what I will say is a little caveat before we go in is that it is not finished. This game, you can see, it's not finished. There are placeholder art everywhere. The character um, creation does not yet have the visual part of it in it. And it does not yet have a whole bunch of other little things that you'll see um, glitches all over the place. This game is unpolished, and that's to be expected. It's not finished yet, but what we're looking at here is we're looking at the concept. We're looking at the the direction it's going, the kind of ideals they're going towards, which I feel is a better way to judge it. It, it we're judging its intentions more than the actual finished product right now. Anyway, I'm going to click new game. You'll see this is currently the character creation. We're just going to pick this guy. It's just a picture right now. And it's going to bring us right into the actual uh, uh, character creation. Which I wouldn't really go into if it wasn't so in-depth and so... It's the thing that kind of sold me on the game. Because it is essentially Pathfinder character creation. Down to the deepest level. So if we click here, we can see like for each character it gives us a couple of different things. It gives us different options. So if we stop on someone uh, like the ranger down here, you'll see that we get the favorite enemy bonus, and then you get this huge amount of information about it. This is what Pathfinder is. If you go and try and create a Pathfinder character, you will see a whole bunch of stuff like this, non-stop. There'll be feet lists, there'll be all of this super in-depth stuff, and that's really cool. That's something that I really like about this game, is that they've, they've taken it, they haven't gone, they haven't basically taken the Pathfinder name and gone, okay, we're gonna just apply it to a game, and it's going to be sort of just a fantasy RPG without any relation to Pathfinder. What they've done is they've taken Pathfinder and they have basically turned it in to the game. Like, that, that, that's cool. They, they haven't uh, glossed over it. So I quite like that. I like the concepts that they're going for here. I think we are actually going to go for Ranger. The ba basic reason is they're a fairly easy character to, cre to create. If we go to someone like a... Um, like a rogue, you see here, you get so many other different little things that you have to add in. But you have someone like a fighter, you have to choose from the feat list, and the feat list, well, well, we'll see on the ranger anyway. So we're going to be playing as a bow user. Let me jump in here, we have to allocate our skill points, uh, so ranger is probably going to use a lot of decks, and again, we hover over it, it tells us a whole bunch of everything. It says, character with this deck score is capable of doing this, it applies to ranged attack rolls, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, we're just going to go all in on decks. We're going to go pretty much as high decks as we can. If we get to choose where we're putting our points, we're putting them there. We're going to make our secondary skill con because, well, we want to have health. And then we're going to put a couple in charisma because we're going to be the ones talking. Then as our race bonus, we get to choose one of these to get an extra plus two to. We're going to put that on deck so we have a plus five to decks. So that's pretty good. Uh, then we get to choose some skill points. These basically go into all of these different little categories. Mobility, that's basically how you move. Uh, you got your different knowledge types for what kind of knowledge we're going to have. Perception lets you get, do perception checks. All, all that sort of stuff. It, they, they do what you think they should do. We're going to do some persuasion because we are going to be the character talking to everyone. I think other stuff we should have. Maybe athletics, although that's a strength check. We've not really gone into strength. Uh, perceptions, a wisdom check. We haven't really gone into that. Let's maybe just go um, lower. Nature. Maybe we'll try and play like the uh, nature kind of ranger look. We'll be the guy who just lives in nature. Comes only into um, society when he needs to get what he needs. 
if you know what I mean by that. Anyway, um, perception or athletics actually does seem all right. I'm trying to see. Is there anything that based? This is based off deck, so maybe we'll go for mobility. That, that works for me. Then we get into our abilities. And again, I am saying everything does not have finished art right now. Some of these, when it says favorite enemy, I imagine when it comes to the actual game, that's going to be a lot cleaner. Uh, and you can see, I think if we go down here, if we look at Deadly Aim, some of these have symbols next to them. I imagine that's where they're going to end up going for a lot of things. Um, so this is the feat list. And if you haven't seen a Pathfinder feat list before, this is the shortened version of it. And we can keep scrolling down. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Like, there, this just keeps going on for a very long time. And you'll see there's a show all button at the bottom if we want to actually see all of them. Like, this this is only... I think this is probably only the ones that we can take currently. If we click show all, I imagine it will show us more. Um, let's see what we want. Um, deadly aim? That sounds like it could be useful. We'll take a minus one penalty on all ranged attack rolls to gain a plus two bonus to all ranged damage rolls. Yeah, that could be good, especially as our high dex allows us to have a higher ranged attack roll. So therefore, taking the pet, we take a small penalty and we get more damage out of it. That works. Choose a second feat. Um, what are we looking for? Rapid shot. Make a full action attack for ranged weapon. You can fire one additional time this round at your highest bonus. Um, the combat in this game is what I would describe as a Pillars of Eternity, or even if you want to go further back, a Knights of the Old Republic style combat system, where it's um, turn-based, kind of. Where things will happen in a turn, but like it's also real-time. So everything has a turn for things to happen, but it, it's it's all in real-time. I hope you, you'll understand what I mean when you get into it. It's, it's very much kind of Pillars of Eternity style, Baldur's Gate style combat. Um, I suspect most of these um, descriptions and how they work are taken directly from the actual tabletop uh, version of this. Um, anything in here? Toughness could be good. This one just gives us three health points or hit points. That will keep us alive. That's what I'm after. And then favorite enemy. Favorite enemy is basically going to be what we're good at fighting. Um, I imagine something like humans would be pretty useful right now. You know, maybe we'll try and play a nature's defender type character. I'm not sure how the story goes and whether that gives us those kind of options, but that could be a cool kind of way to go. And I think that we get to, yeah, we get to choose more favorite enemies at higher levels, so that could work out for us. We'll, we'll choose humans. There we go. And then we get to choose our alignment. Um, I don't know, nature's defender kind of thing. Not lawful, but neutral good. We're... we're We'll do the right thing, but we, it doesn't necessarily have to be within the law, and we're not chaotic. Like, we're not just doing whatever we want. We're, we're trying to go for the best possible outcome for everybody, um, whether it's lawful or not. That, that, that seems to work for me. Oh, we have to choose a name. A name. Oh, these, this is always the bit of every RPG that gets me, but I think we're going to be um, Regnar for just now. Uh, and if you don't know why, you know, you, you just look at the name a little bit closer and you'll you'll get it. Right, and now we get our introduction. Introduction. What is a human being? An animal who loves stories. That's what our mentor at the Academy of Grand Arts, Honorable E. Bald the Insightful, used to say. Our world is not made of rivers and mountains, forests and cities, but of countless stories. That's why the work of bards is so important, for we find, keep, and tell those stories. Truth be told, I never did graduate the Academy, just because I wrote a limerick about the king. But never mind, being a, bar a bard is not about the graduating. It's a high calling. A real bard's place is not within the school walls, but out here, wherever the living history is to be made. To prove that, I've started the book which you, oh my reader, are holding in your hands. Here I will record the most amazing story the whole of Golaron has ever heard. My name is Lindsay. I'll add some fancy nickname later. And my path leads me to the Stolen Lands. This is a mysterious and dangerous area. Time and again, it uh, has attracted various heroes who tried to get honor and fame, but mostly found only inglorious deaths. I don't know yet how this story will end, for it has just started, and I'll write down everything I witnessed without keeping anything back. So follow me, my esteemed reader. Follow me to the Stolen Lands. Lindsay, gotta come up with some fancy nickname here. Right. The Stolen Lands. These lands belong to no one, but are a headache to everyone. They're little more than a strip of disputed territories connected by mile after mile of bad roads teeming with bandits, monsters, the entire way. 
And this is where our small party is headed. Led by an audacious but still unknown hero. The Brevik Sword Lord sent us to enforce some semblance of order in these parts. And we're to start by defeating a gang of bandits led by a leader calling himself the Stag Lord. The reward for success includes a barony and the right to rule the freed lands. The punishment for failure? Ignomious death. But the path to greatness starts with small steps. Our first order of business is to ensure the safety of a trading post belonging to one Olag Leviton. Okay, and then it drops us right in game. So you see we have a party of four right now. Uh, and if we go and have a look, we can see roughly what each character is. So we can see that we are a ranger currently. Um, I think if we have a look at our, our spells, we, we could potentially get spells in the future. We don't have any right now, but I think rangers get some later on. Um, we have with us a human who is an unstoppable warrior. Amory is a barbarian from the realm of the Mammoth Lord. She's blunt, a little crude, and doesn't say much about her past. But in her heart, but her heart's in the right place. I wouldn't have anyone else at my side in battle. So, Barbarian. And as you can see, it says Barbarian 1, as it says Ranger 1 on ours. That's because when you level up, um, as with um, a lot of other RPGs, you don't necessarily have to go for the same class each time. So if you pick Ranger at level 1, you can switch, you can say like, okay, I want to actually go for a level in Paladin. And then you take a level in Paladin and you uh, get the bonuses and it's other stuff that comes with that. So, we'll see here, we also have a bard. This is Lindsay, the person writing the story. The hero's chronicler, as it says. Lindsay is me, the author of the book, which you, oh my reader, are holding in your hands. Yes, we've already read most of that, anyway. And then we also have Valerie, who is a fighter. A reliable comrade in battle. Proud Valerie rejected her destiny of becoming a paladin of uh, Shilin, leaving the order to find her own way in life. Her loyalty to our cause is only matched by her divine beauty. Sure, she can be a, a touch arrogant at times, but I always feel safe when she's around. Uh, like a rock, I can cling to. Okay, and we can see that they all have their different uh, bonuses to different things. So, potentially we can use them for different checks later on. Right. Uh, let's move our party along, and we can see where this story takes us. So, in here, we've got Bakken, who's running away saying, Save yourselves, fools. What are you talking about? Uh, nope, he's, he's he's gone. Okay. Um, what I would actually like to do before we go in here is just quickly change our formation so that we are standing at the back. Because I imagine a ranger standing at the front probably isn't going to go down very well. There we go. We'll put Valerie at the front. That works. And then Lindsay can stay at the back with us. Right. What we, what's happening here? In the name of the Stag Lord, the haha <laughs> lawful authority in the Stolen Lands, we demand this week's tax and some beer. And where's that pretty wife of yours, Oleg? She should serve us dinner. Quiet down, dimwit Oleg. We're just here for the Stag Lord's tax. Hand over the money and we'll be on our way. You want to drink some of my blood too? I'm sick of you. You're like locusts. You think you can control everything around here just because you put up that painted rag of yours. You come here, squeeze us dry, and come a Olag, a large man with a rough face, starts talking when he notices you. Ah, you must be guests from Restov. Mm. Okay, I'm not interested in bloodshed, but I won't let you rob this man. Be on your way and I'll let you go in peace. Alright, we'll leave. But what makes you think we won't just return to greater, greater numbers? Why would we leave when we got easy pickings from rest of before us? We'll rip out your guts and empty your pockets. Okay, so the bandits are obviously arguing with each other. Oh, took a potion of invisibility. Interesting, that did not happen when I was trying this out. Okay, so basically, combat works like this. You can pause it, and it is also real time when you unpause it. You select your abilities, and then you can just point and click. Fairly straightforward and simple. So we're going to use a charge on the first bandit. That makes a little bit of sense. Uh, where are we? We're, we're right here. Uh, we don't have any spells or abilities I'd want to use. We currently have deadly aim on, which actually seems fine. Uh, we're going to attack that bandit there. Lindsay, what have you got? You've got a spell book, so she's got days, so she can... Uh, days a creature so that they um, take no actions. Okay. Give resistance to somebody, light somebody. I kind of think we're just going to go for power, like damage at this point. 
So she can daze and give Sonic and put Sonic damage on someone. So she's going to attack that one. Then Amari is also going to attack that one. She's going to charge at them. And is currently in her rage. Her barbarian rage. Okay. Let's unpause and see how this plays out. So, oh, our charge is working. There we go. Looks like um, Oleg here is pretty good at killing them. And there's one more invisible. Or I guess the invisible one maybe just ran away. Yeah, okay. Well, that went fairly well. We got some rewards, which we'll just collect here. Yep, collect uh, all of that. Seems to be good. We'll look at that later. And let's go speak to Oleg. Hello. Take that, you scoundrels. Oleg shakes his fist. But now, he scratches his head and stares at the ground gloomily. The girl got away, plague on her. Uh, she's certain to complain to the stag lord. They came here before to collect taxes, but this time they'll come to punish treason. Now what are we to do? He sighs heavily. If only I could send uh, Svetlana somewhere safe and show these rats what's what. He notices a fair-haired woman approach. Dove, why are you here? I told you to stay hidden. It's all over. I saw it. I just needed to be sure you were all right. The woman looks at her husband tenderly with a hint of sorrow. Oleg mumbles something as he looks away embarrassed. My name is Svetlana. I'm sorry your arrival to our trading post has turned out so unwelcoming. Um, okay. Um, let's see. I saw someone running out of the trading post. That seems like a good first question. Ah, uh, that must have been Balkin. He sells potions. He lives out in the forest like a hermit. But he comes here every day. He knows every tree and bush in the area and how they can help you. The Stag Lord's gang wants us to work for them. He lacks the courage to fight those bandits, but uh, he won't just walk away from us. He has a good heart, even if he grumbles a lot. Ah, uh, especially recently. So, you say the bandits are going to attack again. Who are they and when will they arrive? Who are they? They're the Stag Lord's gang, that's who. These lands teem with bandits like bedbugs in a beggar's hut. And you just stir them up. They have a camp not far from here. I expect they will return in full force in half a day, maybe less. The Stag Lord won't take an insult like this lightly. And his henchmen are more like demons than men. So, tell me everything. How many bandits are they? And what do they want? What do they want? Those bloodsuckers think they own this land. They come, take what they want, and steal the better part of our money every month as toll for their leader. They even broke our gate so we couldn't try and hide anything from them. No one knows exactly how many there are. Sometimes only five or six, sometimes it's a whole gang. I'd have shown them what for long ago if not for Svetlana. They claim to be collecting taxes. Why? For the Stag Lord and his cronies, of course. That Stag Lord fancied himself as a king in these parts. He may have antlers for a crown, but all the troublemakers around here are happy to follow his orders as long as they're paid. So they charge an arm and a leg as taxes, and they take their uh, executions punishment for treason. Even those who never swore allegiance to the, slag to the stag lord. They're killed fast, if they're lucky. If not, Oleg looks to Svetlana. Dove, why don't you go start supper while we uh, finish our talk? I have no need to be protected from dark talk. I'm not some blind kitten, you know. I've seen what they do to people. Svetlana lowers her head. Most of the gang is made up of simple bandits, and there are a few monsters among the leadership, especially those close to the Stag Lord. Ox and Dovin from Nysrock come to mind. They like to make a show of their tortures and executions. My husband and I, we saw the bodies. Interesting. So we have a couple of different options here. We can go lawful good and say you have nothing to fear. I'll help you with the attack, which I think might be where we end up going. Or we can say... The safety of your post may have been one of the conditions uh, Jamandi Aldori placed on granting me a barony over the stolen lands, but she said nothing about having to listen to your whining. So that's just generally being mean. We're not going to be mean. We're just going to be uh, lawful uh, good here. Well, I appreciate your good intentions. Uh, I may not have the best manners, but Oleg Leviton is the last name you'll hear accused of being ungrateful. If you manage to defend this post, I'll reward you proper. We have to hide Svetlana. Please don't argue, Dove. Now, we also need to decide on a plan. Go ahead and look around. There may be some tools that can be used for battle. There are some pretty solid traps around. Some tar and a box of alchemist fire, looks like. Alchemist fire? We could try and put it by the gate, light it with a burning arrow when those bandits are nearby. 
But that, that could set the post on fire, Oleg shouts surprised. Well, maybe if we cover the walls with someone to protect him. Ah, uh, alright, yes. I, I think it could work. Uh, I'll even shoot the arrow myself. I used to be a pretty good with a bow back in the day. Um, yeah. Can you answer a few more questions before we start? Uh, enough about the bandits. Um, let's talk about yourselves. Oleg shifts uncomfortably. Surely there are more important things to discuss. Well, alright. We're just honest people who came here from Restov. We fixed up the old fort to house travellers and give merchants a place to trade with the locals. We also deal with the occasional huntsmen in the area. What does any of this matter? When those bandits come back, they'll either drain us dry or kill us. Alright, uh, fair enough. Well, let's uh, get back to the attack. Uh, actually, we're... Let's talk later. We'll find some. Um, we'll find some stuff. We'll set up some traps, and then we'll come back to you. All right then. Let's speak to Svetlana. See if she has anything else to say separately. She does not. Not at all. Okay. Oh, Bokken is back. Hello. A frail, disheveled ma old man wearing a stained and tattered robe gives you a gloomy look. I'm Bokken, local herbalist. What brings you here? Uh, tell me about yourself. What's there to tell? I'm a herbalist. I make potions and sell them. Gather herbs, roots, berries. Boken sighs. I live in the forest. Live off the land. Since leaving rest off for these parts, I ended up a merchant here at Oleg and Svetlana's post. They let me in out of kindness. Help me with things. They bring me water or firewood when it's cold. And occasionally, barrel of honey. They're good people. Well, you want to help them? You know, you could use your help fighting the bandits. Where is this coming from? You want an old man like me to fight? Here, take this potion. Consider that my help in your fight. A potion to cure wounds. That's alright. But we're going to use our diplomacy. The bandits are here to bother you as much as Fetlana and Oleg. Maybe more. Help us get rid of them for good. Bokken scratches his head, then hums to himself and puffs his chest out. Well, alright. I'll show those troublemakers. They'll learn better than to chase an old man around. Someone might even write up some verses about me. Maybe even heroic ones. Lindsay gives you a worried glance and turns to Bokken. Please be careful. Go ahead and help, but leave the heroic stuff, you hear? Alright, we'll talk later. We got Bokken in here to help. Now what we can also look at here um, is we do have some quests. So... We can see that we actually have a little bit more of a backstory than it's given us here. What I'm assuming it's done is it's dropped us a little bit into the story. Like, it just to so get the ball rolling a little bit. So, um, we're setting off on our first big adventure. Germandi Aldori, the rest of Sword Lord, is testing the contenders for the role of the ruler of the Stolen Lands. There is only one way to prove that you are worthy of the title, to rid the vicinity of the ravaging bandits and their leader, a bloody cutthroat named the Stag Lord. Tremble, you scoundrels, we are coming. So, first thing is we have to protect the trade post. Okay, but we also have another thing here. We have another quest. Somewhere in the Stolen Lands, a gnome sorcerer at Tars Tartusio is uh, wandering. The rival of our leader for the Baron's uh, coronet. He is cunning, dangerous, and definitely preparing some nasties, uh, da nastiness for us. This way or another, we must defeat him. Okay, so we're both vying for this same task. Alright, interesting. And you can also see that we leveled up right after those little conversations. So, let's start with ourself. So, what are we going to do? I think we're going to put a second point in Ranger. That just makes a lot of sense for us right now. Uh, as I seem to remember, you seem to get a lot of stuff at... Um, well, you get level 1 and level 3 are kind of your first two big jumps. So, we want to get to level 3 in Ranger before we even think about moving on to something else. Although, I, there are some strategies where you take, like, a point in Cleric for healing or something like that. Um, but yeah, we'll stick with this. So what do we get? We get Ranger Style Feat. So we get a Combat Style to Pursue. The choices depend on if the APG is being used. APG is, I think... Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I think that's the, the Advanced Rules. So if we go into the Options here, it says what type of rules you're using. I think maybe that's what it's talking about. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but that's fine. We're still going to do it. And we'll pick whatever is available on the options list. And then we also get a favorite class bonus. So, 
we get extra additional hit points every level we gain in our favorite class. Okay, that's fine. Um, right, so here we also get some skill points. Uh, let's put another one in nature. Another one in persuasion. Anything else? We Maybe athletics as well. Just to kind of round ourselves out a little bit more. And then here we get to take a combat skill. We take mobility, so we get plus three checks on anything involving mobility. That could be good. At point blank shot, we get plus one bonus on attack and damage rolls with ranged weapons at ranges up to 30 feet. That seems like it could be useful. We'll take that. Anything that just passively increases our damage is something I quite like. Then we'll level up Valerie. She is a fighter. She's taking one level in that. Um, I wonder why these are... Oh, I guess we're these are um, grayed out because you cannot select them at the same time. I wonder whether that's something that's going to be in the main game or whether that's just something that's uh, there right now. Anyway, we're just going to take an extra point fighter right now. So we get another bonus combat feat. So we get a lot of uh, options there, I think. We also get another favored class uh, hit points. So more health. Then bravery. At level 2, the fighter gains a plus 1 bonus and will saves against fear. Hmm, that's good. Right, and we can have a look at the stat distribution. So a lot in con, as you would expect. Some in strength, some in dex, and some... A lot in charisma, actually. A reasonably high amount in charisma. Um, we could put some in athletics, but they've got a total of minus 10. I assume that's counting um, equipment, so probably means that she has heavy armor on or something like that. Same with mobility. Let's give her some more knowledge about religion, perhaps, because it's her background. And then we'll give her... Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll put more in athletics. That could work. And then here we have to choose our bonus combat feat. Ah, uh, there's a lot of different options. Um, what kind of stuff are we looking for? Well, we're looking for something that will just kind of generally be all right. Keep her alive. That's, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Shield wall. Whenever you're wielding a shield and also adjacent to an ally wielding a shield. Uh, nope. We don't have any other people using a shield. Shield focus. Increase the AC bonus grants by any shield you're using by one. Passively good. That's what I'm looking for right now. We'll take that. We have yeah, our Barbarian. We'll let's uh, yeah, let's give her another point in Barbarian. Until we know more about them, what kind of directions we want to take them. That's fine. Hmm. Yeah, this one has Monk and Paladin uh, kind of moved off. It, but it doesn't have Fighter. That's interesting, but Fighter had Barbarian and Paladin moved off. Maybe it's a character-specific thing. Like, this character cannot be a Monk or a Paladin. It might be alignment-based. That's possible. That's definitely a possible thing. Uncanny dodge is what we got now. So the character can react to danger before her senses would normally allow her to do so. She would not be caught flat-footed, nor does she lose her dexterity bonus to AC if the attacker is invisible. That could be useful, because they have invisibility potions. Um, what else have we got? We got rage powers, so she can now use her rage in new ways. At level 2, a barbarian gains a rage power. Gains another rage power every two levels. Uh, okay, I guess we have to choose what that is, and then she gets her favorite class bonus. All right. Skill points. Uh, let's let's put a lot in perception for her. Or perception, athletic. Let's just put one in each. That makes sense. Perception, athletic, nature. Maybe that's how um, our characters are in any way together. Like, it's the, the people who live out in the wilderness kind of thing. Uh, and what else have we got? We have to choose one of these. So, while raging, the barbarian gets a bite attack. If used as part of a full attack action, the bite attack is made at the Barbarian's full base attack bonus minus 5. Yeah, this is what I mean by Pathfinder as well. Like, it's very detail focused. It's got a lot of um, stuff with this will do this, and it will also do this, and it will also do this, but it'll, under these conditions it will not do that. Um, not really what I'm looking for. Renewed Vigor. Um, a standard action of a Barbarian heals 1d8 points of damage plus her constitution modifier. What's her con? Her con is currently plus 2. That's not too bad. So she could get a maximum of 10 health. Uh, that seems reasonable. Yeah. Or regenerative stance. So at the start of her turn she regenerates one temporary hit point. Not really what I'm looking for. While raging gain one natural armor bonus. Actually that one seems really good. That's like one extra AC. That seems good. And then we have Lindsay, who I believe is our bard. And we're going to keep going into bard for her. So she's well versed. Comes resistant to bardic performances of others and to sonic effects in general. Okay. It's a plus four bonus to saving throws made against all of those things. Bard talents. We get a bard talent. Fairly similar to how the other ones were getting bonuses. And then we also get our uh, favorite class bonus to hit points. 
Okay, uh, what are we going to go for? Well, we're obviously, I think knowledge of world and knowledge of arcana seems good for her. There's, she is kind of a bard, she knows a lot of that sort of stuff. Persuasion, maybe also good. I'm not sure if it's worth putting that on your companions. In a lot of RPGs it isn't, but it might be worth doing that. And then, actually, maybe we won't put another one in Persuasion. Um, we'll just go for Trickery, which is uh, characters' ability talent to perform tasks that require fine manipulation. Okay. And then use magic device ability to use magic devices. That seems all right. Then we have to choose our ability. So fast stealth. Uh, as, as I said, it's not quite finished uh, yet, but that's fine. Uh, we'll not pick that one. Uh, and we can choose a skill focus. Let's choose um, use magic device skill focus. Let's see how that goes. See whether that leads somewhere good. Okay, and because we're bard, we get to choose another spell, I think, at level one. So she currently has Cure Light Wounds and Ear Piercing Scream. Well, sounds good. Uh, cause Fear? That sounds like it could be good. Hideous Laughter? Um, this spell afflicts the subject with uncontrollable laughter. Subject can take no actions while, laugh, laugh, uh, while laughing, but it's not considered helpless. After the spell ends, it can act normally. Okay. That seems like that could be really good. It's just take someone out, or we can summon a monster. Uh, an extra planar pony. You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll take the summon a pony. Let, let's see how that goes. Right. Well, I think that is quite enough for the first episode. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, commenting, all that sort of stuff as it really helps with search ranking. And I'm not going to mention it again after this episode. Um... Yes, and also, if you are interested in the Pathfinder Kingmaker game, there is a link down in the description which will tell you more about it. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.